Hey, that was Alice DJ. We're better off alone now. Over to Will. Chris, thank you. Alice DJ, Chris, we were just talking while it was playing. Could you just say again, you, you think that was 99? Alice DJ, Better Off Alone, was released in 1999. Um, but I'm sure it's been released before that as another type of song. We- so, so it might have been a sample at the time or it might have been sampled since? Yeah. We, yeah, we don't know, but no. music is d- an ever recurring circle, and the copyright arrangements are sort of allow for that, don't like they? Like Barabbas, yes, they do. Barabbas, Barabbas, the circle of life. All oh, right, Barabbas. I think we'll get Google. We'll OK, get um, I think we got somewhat sidetracked. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll, co- we'll come back to that later on, maybe. Because I, I, I think, well... Volker, can I, can I just say, um, before, I get, before I start to sort of putting some ideas to you about, about digital distribution, things like that, I think we should mention, in case we forget later, that the, the, the whole work is moving to Taunton. Yes, that's right. Uh, between October 6th and November the 17th, certainly the work Annie High Street, that's the big triptych, woodcuts, and the the witness box, the little plastic televisions, as well as the video, ins- video installation will move to the brew house. The prison cell won't, because there is not enough room to accommodate that work there. Okay. But the um, actual work, any high street and everything that's associated with it in terms of theme and research process will go to the brew house. Um, October 6th to November 17th. So if people can't get to the RAM this week, that's, that's their next chance. They'll see a compressed version of it at the brew house. And will you be taking commissions there? Will there be bits around the edges that haven't been filled in yet that... that may be filled in in Taunton yes I, I pictured his work going to more venues across the country until it's been completely commissioned that's what I picture to happen to this work but the woodcuts will just be from Exeter you're not going to do any new woodcuts no because it's Annie High Street I've used Exeter as a source material but the work would have to prove itself on that level in other places now Okay. Fair to say, though, that it's about 50%, well, almost, I guess, I'm guessing now almost 50% of the commissions we've taken were from people outside Exeter. Uh, you know, quite a lot of visitors during the summer months, during the summer holidays, people from right. London and all over the place, uh, coming down to look at the West Country, popping into the museum on a rainy day, for example, and, um, you know, recognising their high street in some form or not, and saying, oh, I'll have one of those, you know. So it does work, it does work. And there were lots of rainy days. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> yeah, very good for the museum business. Devon summer weather. Yeah. Not the ice creams, though. No. 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 Well, what I, what I really wanted to put to you was H- Hogarth, at the time he, he started doing his four, four times a day and... Uh, other etchings Rake's progress really well Rake's enough. progress he was he was really using the available technology to increase distribution he was reaching a much wider public mm-hmm. than, than artists up to that time mm-hmm. and technology now is, is all very web based I think I think, yes. it's, think it's the internet that's changing how, how media operate yes we're in a uh, arguably in an era of mass mass distribution um, and that doesn't say much about the quality of the information that's being distributed. Um, I mean, Hogarth himself, I found interesting because he was a moralist as well as a businessman. That's always an interesting mixture. <laughs> so um, I don't think he's rated very highly as an artist, but he was extremely popular at the time and he keeps um, sort of being referred to by other artists. David Hockney, the whole reworking of the Rake's Progress, for example. And um, he keeps inspiring people because I think as a phenomenon he he 
he epitomized something probably about the culture of his time that goes beyond his his cartoonism you know about be beyond his actual pamphlets but yes he was a very successful businessman and he reached a very large audience through pamphlets nowadays print medium is obviously hopelessly outperformed in terms of distribution by the internet by television you know i think it's not so the what, way to reach so what, what sort what sort of run lengths did he do do you think i, I mean, don't know but a lot. I know his work was very popular. It got um, so it would be hundreds or thousands of copies, uh, tens of thousands, presumably. I mean, it got copied um, uh, uh, illegally. I, th I believe Hogarth. I mean, your listeners better, better check on that. But I believe he was instrumental in introducing the first copyright bill um, because his work got um, copied so much. Um, so you know, he wanted to keep his fingers on the on the income stream. You know, so like that's mine. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, I'm interested in pamphleteering. I, in fact, I see this work that I'm doing also as a form of pamphlet, but it's more about the quality of the work that people take with them rather than the sheer mass of work that goes out and about there. Because I can't, through printmaking, compete with the internet. You know, Somebody tweets a mediocre comment and potentially it goes out a gazillion times over. Um, you know, whereas I will have reached, by the end of the period, I'm guessing about 900 to 1,000 people um, who have actually commissioned work. Um, if, if the commission continues at the current pace, the current size image, you know. Um, but these people will take with them uh, the, the aura of the artwork. I mentioned that before and you the smile. The aura. Well, I've, I've heard this word, the aura. Yes, yes. Oh, but when, uh, there's a difference there. It's an original we'll print they take with them, and that is a difference in quality. And I think what I was interested well, in let's, is... Well, let's look at the... Um the, the 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 video the the what, what's the so what's the proper name for for the the the, the Bob the Builder toy? What, what, what's what's that properly called and what what is, what is that? Um, the work is called Witness Box. The Witness Box. Yes, and um, twelve scenes of public life in and around Exeter um, at this point in time, two thousand eleven and twelve. It was made over the course of a year, roughly. I also sell the prints without the objects, and I like to call them my twelve apostles. <laughs> So the prints, is that a limited edition? The, the prints, prints are a 30 edition, but the actual television is only a 4 edition. So they're not the kind of thing that, you know, you know, everybody would buy for themselves as opposed to something that's more of a collector piece, so to speak. So if those images were to be shown on, on like an iPhone or a, a, a tablet through, through an app, uh, what would be the consequence for the aura compared to how they're displayed at the moment? Uh, I mean, they haven't been conceived to be presented like that. I, I'd probably. I mean, it depends. I mean, bearing in mind that these images, for example, they 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 join up. They they um, if you look at them the way they are placed inside the televisions, uh, in inside the objects, they're, they're not stories. They're not narratives. They, they go in a circle, in an eternal circle, and they join up where they begin. So the object is part of the thoughts of the, of the print. They circumscribe, or each of them circumscribes a state of being as opposed to a story, because it ends exactly where it begins, because it goes in an eternal loop inside that cheap toy, so to speak. So how could you possibly so you couldn't present have that, that as an image? Um, so it's, you're saying that television's always got narrative, that if it's a video or something... Well, unless it's a loop. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't see why you can't have loop loops on oh, well, on, uh, on, yeah. on small screens loop, or, or loops, large screens. On large screens, loops of different length. Yeah, you know, you know, sometimes say you know, you know, soap operas are always the same. You know, in a way, you can get stuck on the loop so watching the, the, soaps. So the, the video, the video that you've done there, could could that be on YouTube? Could that exist separately to the gallery? Uh, um, of course it could. The question is, what would it do? I mean, the way the videos are presented within the gallery context is that they go alongside the workspace in which actual prints are made, alongside the, the printing original printing plates, which people can touch if they want, alongside the triptych with the work going up. So between them, they form a space that is hopefully self-explanatory, more so the more prints go up on the wall and they make, this, they're spatially considered, so to speak, they're part of a gallery environment, so of course they do something different in that place that they would do up on YouTube, they, they do. It's a different way of, of viewing in that gallery space with all the other components that you couldn't possibly reproduce um, on YouTube or through YouTube, so um, I wouldn't have produced them like that for YouTube either. So have, would, is the is 
another sort of work that you might consider that would would be suitable as an app or for YouTube or I mean or do, or the, yeah yeah check it out Cyclopath on YouTube yeah, there's, there's one you know that's a performance action you know alluding to the quality of Cyclopaths around Exeter it's um, called Cyclopath Cyclopath Cyclo, Cyclopath yeah yeah just okay, well, we'll look it up on YouTube there's a nice self-contained little piece of work you know it's a couple of years old I think 2007 I made that but that's one that you know it's meant to be on YouTube. It's been made like that. So, just say a bit more about this word aura then. I mean, presumably a YouTube clip like that hasn't got much aura. Well, it's um, it's an artifact that's held in some sort of esteem, I suppose, you know. Um, and that um, has to do with the fact that it's an original. It probably has to do with the fact that an amount of labour has gone into it. That it's not um, existing countless times over that there is a personal relationship that can be formed between the beholder of the work and the owner <laughs> of the work and the work itself, I suppose. And um, hopefully that um, the work triggers as an original all sorts of associations and thoughts that you know wouldn't be achieved otherwise. That it really, really adds value, very specific and particular value, just by being the real thing, so to speak. Okay, I think we're going to leave, it, leave this here because um, we, we've probably got a bit time for some, some more music for for, 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 for we go. But I, I hope you can come back again, Volker, another another time, another year, another project, another year, another project, <laughs> or we'll put to you um, some other ideas because I I think in well I'll just I'll just sort of rave on a bit and then you can comment on my my, my rave because we, we I mean just repeating things that we've said while while the music's playing. Um, like the the Michael Jackson uh, project, bad. Um, that that was expensive to do. I think there's a lot of work on that, and in some ways it's a continuing project. But they they expected to sell between ten and twenty million copies of it. I'm uh, sure Michael Jackson's dead. You know. Uh well, on one level he's dead. Yeah, in one way he is dead. Okay. So is Hogarth, and um, so is a lot of other people. It's true. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that's a different kind of thing. Whether whether it's got an aura or not, I'm not sure. OK. Um, shall we have some stooshy with Blackheart? I think we should. <laughs> 